such an iconic species. In our language name, we call it the Kila. They're one of the earliest parrots to have evolved, so they, they really are a kind of ancient relic. To us, from a park's point of view, they're actually a tourist attraction. The first time you see a palm cockatoo, you never forget it. The Cape York palm cockatoo is the largest cockatoo in the world. Scientists consider these birds a separate subspecies from the ones that occur in Papua New Guinea. If one wants to understand not only the ecological, but also the behavioural aspects of a species, one must be able to tell the individuals apart. Ornithologists usually capture the birds and physically mark them with leg bands. However, parrots can be difficult to capture and they may be too sensitive to handle. I've been studying palm cockatoos for seven years now and over the years the study questions have changed. Back then the idea was to try to figure out how we can identify palm cockatoos, um, palm cockatoo individuals in a non-invasive way. So I trialled this vocal individuality uh, test as well as photo identification and then later the questions started to turn to behaviour type questions. Now that we could start to work out who is who in the population, then all of a sudden it opened up the possibility of looking at their behaviour like drumming. And so for the past three seasons, up here in the dry season, I've been trying to record as many drumming events as possible. It's not a great line of sight, but at least it's not flushing. Okay, so here we're going to do a nest check at a previously known active palm cocky hollow. So we're going to hoist this camera up to the top to see what's inside. Complete six. Yeah, complete six. Very good. So this has been a really great discovery by this project, uh, the, the interaction between the adult and the juvenile when the juvenile is between six and nine months old and in fact it, it took me four years and it's just yeah, remarkable to see and to be able to come to this branch and know that every night they're going to get fed here. Field work is never boring in this remarkable part of the world, but without passion for wildlife, it would be impossible to do this job. Field seasons can last for over five months and conditions can be very challenging. I really enjoy being up here in Iron Range in the Lockhart River area. And for several reasons, one of them is just the sheer diversity of species up here. Uh, not just the birds, but the snakes as well and the reptiles. Are really interesting and you go spotlighting at night. There's always so much to do. I never feel like I have enough time and there's, there's all these unique species that I want to go find that are only occurring in this region. It's a huge privilege to not only be able to study uh, palm cockatoos, but also to come up and see uh, the wildlife up here and the absolute incredible diversity and biomass that this, this part of the world supports. It's like nowhere else. It's really, really special. With being a relatively understudied species, there's lots to discover. And over the past seven years, we certainly have discovered quite a lot about palm cockies. I found out get, they give at minimum 27 different syllables and and what was really cool is that I found that they were mixing and matching these syllables to make a more varied repertoire, vocal repertoire. And so it's kind of like songbirds, how songbirds 
they, they mix and match different syllables and have phrases and things like that. So it's unusual for a parrot to be doing this. Having been around these gorgeous creatures, it is not surprising that local people don't mean a threat to palm cockatoos. They respect and admire them instead. Wherever they see the palm cocky, they was sort of like signed up spirit nearby or devil nearby so people people kept their distance so that's why no one no one ate it um, um, no one killed the palm cockatoo um, so it's it's been like a sacred animal for 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 you know in our area you know around Lockhart area but they are far from being safe about 3,000 adult birds are estimated to exist in Australia, and research from Lockhart River has shown that the population is in fact declining. It is unclear why they have such low breeding success, but breeding is not possible without large tree hollows that take hundreds of years to form. And if you get to study an iconic species, the responsibility comes with it. It was found that around every 2.2 years, one pair will lay an egg, and with a low reproductive success, it works out that one pair will only successfully fledge one chick once every 10 years. And so in that regard, they're particularly vulnerable to any, any threats from, from human activity. So in the wet season, you, know, you get like meters of rain coming down. Um, and so the road pretty well washes away and every year they need to add new material. And this is where they get it from, a road quarry. And unfortunately, a lot of these occur in palm cockatoo breeding habitat. Palm cockatoos cannot build their own nest. They rely on nature and decades of time for their precious particular hollows to form. And these are very susceptible to intense fires late in the dry season. So we also have a good working relationship with the National Park Rangers. Each year I update them with what information I found out about palm cockatoos and the important breeding areas. and they've been really responsive in prioritising those areas with regards to their fire regime. Hopefully we're going to get a, a lot more good data in the long term out of it when Christina's you know, spent another 100 years here studying them. Um, what we would really like to know out of it is things like our, our burning regime. Uh, when we go out and, and do our, our burning off every year, are we doing it right? Um, you know, are the populations being affected by the sorts of things that we do on the park? Apart from their long evolutionary history, what makes these birds amazing from a biologist's point of view is their elusive, mysterious behaviour. I've seen it, or oh, more heard it than seen it. Um, and I've heard them. Um but um, never actually seen them. Only once, only once I got to see it, but boy was it great. Unlike chimpanzees or New Caledonian crows that also use tools, palm cockatoos, they do it in a non-foraging context. They don't get any caloric benefit from it, no tasty treats. And so it begs the question, well, why are they doing it? Why are they spending so much time, you know, so much effort to make tool and, and to drum with it. Hundreds of hours sometimes of work put in to be able to see and, and record one of these drumming events. So the, the ratio of, of effort to outcome is, is ridiculously skewed, which is probably one of the reasons why these birds haven't been particularly well studied before. There's been one small paper based on a few observations of drumming of palm cockatoos and that was way back in 1984 and so here we are in 2015 analyzing our data of over 60 drumming events and so we can just get a much better idea of what that drumming's about. In spite of the great efforts to uncover their secrets, the palm cockatoos still have a lot to offer. Will scientists have enough time to learn more about them? and to ensure their long-term future. It's so important that we put in the effort to find out more about them, to understand how they behave, to understand how they interact with their environment, because that's the only way that we're going to be able to effectively manage their populations and ensure that they stick around for a very long time.